problem, you know, speak the word of God over it. You know, get into the spirit and truth and you start releasing that truth by the spirit. And uh, a good place to start is right here. Just let this thing play constantly, man. And just, just get it deep in your spirit. And you'll find that it comes out of your spirit the more you feast upon him in his presence. Anyways, I'm going to go do that right now. I feel like I, I really just want to go deeper into the Lord and just worship Him in spirit and truth and surrender more. The more you surrender, the more like you just, oh, I just love His presence, don't you? <laughs> Anyways, that's it for this video. I'm going to start this video off correctly. Just grab your cup and just dip it into the heart of God. I've been reading the Bible a lot recently, uh, just reading the Bible. I usually just listen to it on my audio and my phone and stuff like that. Before I get into that, let's do a quick commercial. San Pellegrino fruit juices. Does the body good? <laughs> That's real orange juice in there. And that bubbly stuff, it's like spring up, oh well. Let the well of salvation bubble up within you. I heard someone say, bubble, bubble, bubble. The devil's in trouble. <laughs> you can draw from the well of salvation anytime you want. Just don't let any of the Philistine dust get in the well, you know. Or else you'll be, you'll be really thirsty and you won't even realize it. But you'll, you might even just die from lack of drinking the river of life. So... You should always start off just by faith. Whoever's thirsty, let them come to me and drink, or whatever Jesus said there. So just grab your cup and just by faith. I've been reading the scriptures out loud a lot. Because um, there's something about it when you just shut everything off and just focus on it, and then you just, man, stuff will pop in your mind, and you can just pray it through real quick. But I noticed that uh, Abraham. Well, actually, I was reading Abraham just now, but I was before that Noah. Noah had nowhere to rest. He sent out the raven, you know, and then he sent out the dove, and the dove didn't have anywhere to rest her foot. It reminded me of Jesus Christ, where he had nowhere to rest his head, his headship, his government. There's nowhere to rest his head until the body of Christ. In the spirit, that's where he rests. You know that we're the footstool? <laughs> or the earth is the footstool? You know, your body was made from the dust of the earth. God rests in you. <clears throat> his headship, Jesus Christ is the head of the body. You know, his head rests upon his body. If you want that rest, it's just like connecting to the head. And it's not letting any of the Philistine dust get in your gates or plug you up or anything of the world. I didn't notice, like... Sometimes little tiny things that are not even sin can actually plug up the well, like simple things, hobbies. So it's just like you pull, I pulled myself away from certain hobbies just for a season, not you know, unless God just you know locks me in the spirit realm and I can't help but just get you know plastered in the glory all day long, <laughs> like the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> you know, I might not even go back to those idols. I don't know, or I call them idols. <laughs> just. Hobbies, idols, whatever, anything that distracts from the presence of God could be an idol, could be just, you know, or you could actually enjoy the Lord while you're doing your your hobby or whatever you do, whether it's like hiking, you know, walk with the Lord, you know, Abraham was a hiker, <laughs> Jesus was a hiker, you know, or whether it's playing video games, like sometimes it distracts me from the Lord. Other times, I'll sit there and play Candy Crush in, you know, just plastered in the spirit. Because I'm just praying in tongues, listening to audio Bibles, plus I'm playing Candy Crush. It's just, sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's a distraction. Sometimes watching movies or binging on Netflix. You know, sometimes I'm watching the movies, I'll get revelation, just like I'm looking for what the Lord is saying, how to parallel it with the scripture. I, my mind is constantly going, just like... God, what are you saying? And other times I'm just lazy and vegetating and it's just boring. And I don't know. I sat there and watched a series last night and it was so boring. I mean, it was a good series, but it was boring because I wanted to be feeding my spirit. And then right after we finished watching about like five episodes of a, uh, I don't even know what it's called, some space show, whatever. I went and threw on someone's sermons and then, man, I can just feel alive. 
I I even went to bed with it playing. I just let it play because I was laying down on my bed just listening to this dude preach and the anointing, I could feel the anointing. I'm like, man, I just don't want this to stop. This is this is better than a million years of having all of Netflix, every single, you know, if I could devour all that stuff and compare it to like five minutes of this, I'd rather just feed my spirit than my soul, you know? And so I just I just fed on that all night long and and I've been reading the Bible. Like actually just sitting down and reading it. I usually don't read because it's you know, it's it's painful almost. <laughs> but I'll show you what I've been learning. Uh, the dove had nowhere to rest its head, it, nowhere to rest its foot or whatever. And then the second time he sent it out, I believe, it came back with an olive, olive leaf, prophesying where the rest was going to be. You know, brought back an olive leaf, <laughs> the anointing oil. All, all rest is in the anointing oil. He's the head, the anointed one. <laughs> you know, your cup, if you want your cup to overflow, you just draw from him. He's the, he's the well of salvation. You know, he's, he's everything. He's the anointing oil that pours forth from his head down to the entire body. The body's not anointed unless it first comes from the head. Hallelujah. And then, uh, I don't know, there's a bunch of other stuff. I saw some amazing things that jumped out to me. I just can't remember them right now because that was, that was two days ago. Uh, something weird that I saw was Joseph. You know, Joseph was a righteous man. And when he found out that the baby that was in his, uh, like his fiance, Mary, was pregnant. Uh... I'm gonna come back to the Noah thing if I if I can remember it. Lord, bring it back to my memory. His fiance was pregnant with a baby that wasn't his, but it says that he was a righteous man, the scriptures, and and he didn't want to make her publicly disgraced. He didn't want to expose her. And it, instantly I started thinking about all those blogs who just expose all these other ministers calling them false prophets and deceivers and stuff like that. And I've actually went on these blogs and try to communicate with these people and say, oh yeah, okay, let's, wow, they're really doing that. Let's pray for them. And none of them would pray for me. No, I'll pray with me. None of them would pray for the ones they accused. They just wanted to accuse. I'm like, man, where's the love here? Like, you're exposing, I'm not, I never said that, but like, I'm thinking, where's the love? Why You're exposing all these people all their flaws it's like jesus if you're gonna like take the you know the law the the speck out of your brother's eye get the log out of your own eye or first cast the beam out of your own eye that spirit you have to cast it out first cast the beam out that's what the that's what i read in my bible i don't know what the other bibles say but first cast the beam out out of your own eye you can actually cast devils out of your eyes vision is that it's that accusing spirit. And you shall see clearly to get the speck out of your brother's eye. How do you see clearly? You see not with de demonic vision, but you see through Christ's vision. You see through a third heaven perspective. You see through Christ, <laughs> you know. And then, uh, so yeah, I've, I've engaged these blogs and there's zero love there. There's zero anything. It's just accusation after accusation. And then I go back to Joseph. He would not publicly make her known because he was righteous. Because love covers a multitude of sins. And it wasn't even that she sinned. He didn't even know this yet. And then just because he chose to do what's right, what's righteous, probably interceding, he probably had a wounded, broken heart, devastated. It's like, oh no, she's cheating on me. Committing adultery. She would have been stoned to death. She would have died and the Messiah in her belly. Like, think about it. You know how deep this goes. But God knew what he was doing by choosing him. Not, not too much is ever said about Joseph. It's always about Mary. And, but I started seeing a side of Joseph that I've never seen before. He was right. He didn't want to expose her. He, it was just, he gave it all to God. And then God gives him a dream saying like, you know, take Mary, you know, don't worry about it, you know, everything's, this is all me, <laughs> and 
And then what's written about him afterwards, he's getting these prophetic experiences because he chose to do what's right. And then God's leading him through these angelic messengers in his dreams. And then later on, he, uh, God is guiding him by his spirit through the dream realm. And he's protecting this child and, its, and his mother. You know, baby Jesus and Mary through the prophetic, through dreams, through revelation. Because he was righteous and he chose not to expose her and, you know, get her destroyed in death. It reminded me of Jesus when he's protecting the woman. Because love covers a multitude of sins. And they all want to stone her. She's caught in adultery. And all the Pharisees around her are just raging and they want, it, they want her dead. They want justice of the law. And then uh, they say to Jesus, you know, the law says that she be, should be stoned. But what do you say? And he stood on the ground and he wrote in the dust. Basically, the very dust <laughs> that created man, the creator of the dust, the creator of, of mankind. He's, he's just writing, probably, I don't know what he was writing in the dust. Maybe he's writing their sins. Maybe he's writing the Ten Commandments. Maybe he was writing his own name, you know. Maybe he was writing cleanse. Maybe he's writing, I don't know what he was writing. God knows. But he's the finger of God. <laughs> When he stands up, and when translation says, He was without sin, let him cast the first stone. He who has never sinned, let him cast the first stone. And then, uh, and they all began to be ashamed and, con and convicted. And, uh, and they began to leave Jesus, which is the greatest mistake you could ever do. Because when you get convicted of sin, you're supposed to run to Jesus. <laughs> But that's what the Pharisees do. They, they, it's not about Jesus. It's about being right in their own eyes, not in the eyes of Christ. And so they began getting convicted and leaving. And then Jesus, you know, he protected the woman. But not so that, like, she would be killed, but he, he provided the way of escape, which was himself. He said, go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. Well, it could be worse than the manifestation of unconditional love right before this woman's eyes. She's seen love for the first time. She's only known lust, but now she sees love looking, radiating through her, saying, go and sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. Go and sin no more. And uh, she had the grace, because he was full of grace and truth. The truth cut her heart, but the grace empowered her to stay within that truth. It's the power of God. And uh, she encountered love that day for the first time in her life. There's more to that. I've actually seen it deeper in my heart. It just cracks me. But that's enough to know that Joseph chose the right thing. It chose the right thing to give it all to God. What do you think righteousness is? It's full dependence on God, walking with God, right standing with God, right walking with God, being right with God, and God is spirit. So we have spiritual experiences to be led by the spirit, which are dreams and visions and encounters with the living God to lead you. And then after this, he's following the dreams, he's obeying the dreams, he's obeying what's coming from God, he knows the voice of God because he's, he's obeying these dreams. When he heard that Herod died, Archelaus or someone took over or something like that. I'm back to Joseph. And he was afraid to go uh, back to where, you know. And so he went into Nazareth to fulfill the scriptures. That he shall be called a Nazarene or whatever, you know. Like he's fulfilling scriptures, prophetic revelation, all because he chose to be better than bitter. <laughs> he chose to die to himself in the flesh, but chose to do what's right. And it's amazing the little tiny decisions that we make in our lives lead to such a, just a wider opening dimension in our life to experience God. So that's why I started this video. I, like, I just started reading the Bible. I started noticing that my hunger was getting less and less for the Word of God <coughs> because I've been, I've been playing this uh, uh, Japanese role-playing RPG Octopath Traveler Nintendo. It's very heavily story-based. So that I'm not really listening to the Bible while it's playing or sermons or anything. I started feeding my soul on this video game. And I started getting less and less hungry for the things of God. So then I, I purposely shut it off. I shut it off about a week ago. 
and I can't even play it anymore because it just seems like, oh, it'd be such a waste of time, you know? <laughs> what I used to consider a hobby, it seemed like it almost became an idol, and and then uh, I just decided, well, I'm going to read, I'm going to devour the, I'm going to force feed myself the Word of God, and it started opening up, and I started seeing different realms, started seeing different uh, characteristics in some of the people that I've never seen before, like the way I've seen them now, like Joseph, and Man, he was like a protector of, you know, the Messiah. What an honor. <laughs> you know, it was God through him, though, obviously. God had to lead Joseph. But he was led by the Spirit through dreams. So many times we discount our dreams. We're like, ah, oh, it was just a dream. But hey, that's one of the ways God speaks. That's one of the ways God protected his son, Jesus Christ. The Father protected the son through Joseph. You know, hallelujah. You know, so it's very important. Wow, something's coming in the room there. It's important to pay attention to the little, tiny things that we could just pass off as just, you know, it's not important. But it is important. God reveals what's in your heart in the dreams. In your dreams, when you have dreams, usually black and white dreams are, are, are like, uh, you know, there might be spiritual warfare dreams, and then you know what to pray against. You know how to defeat that simply. Other times it's just stuff in the atmosphere. Because you know, if you have neighbors, you'll be getting the overflow of their, their soul life. Plus, whoever else is in your household, you get the overflow of their life. So it's easy to pay attention to your dreams, to know what to pray, to know what to break, to know what to release. <sighs> and, uh, you know, visions and dreams, visions, revelations, you know, understanding the scriptures. Uh, all these things are just, they come naturally the more time you spend focusing on the king the author and perfecter of your faith i noticed that uh the authority that we walk in is measured toward like you can measure someone how much authority someone's walking in by their love for the king of glory because that love is like a gateway for the king of glory to pour through and that's basically how much they can release Christ. <laughs> Another thing I was reading today is Abraham. Uh, how did I word it? Or how was it worded? I've been reading the Amplify Bible. It's, that thing is so rich. So good. Uh, you know, God's going to bless Abraham and make him a blessing. And you know that scripture? I think it's Abraham 12. Are we Genesis chapter 12? It says, I'll bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. And it was talking about how God was going to make Abraham great, or Abram at this time great, make his name great, so that basically so he could be a blessing. And it has in brackets, like in the Amplified, to amplify what's actually being said there, to release goodness, to release good to others, or something like that. And I, instantly I was just triggered, like, wow, no one is good but one. That's God. Jesus said that in the New Testament. So God was basically making Abraham a celebrity, <laughs> making him famous to manifest God. He's the father of faith. You know, faith is the substance of things hoped for. What are you hoping for? I want more of God. More of God in my life. All of you, none of me. You know, the prayers we pray. And it's like to release God to everyone who comes around him. Because a lot of the people in all the world, they were worshipping idols. And then when they look at Abraham, they can see someone walking in covenant with God. So that when people see you, what is the blessing that you can release to them? Good. Release good to them. There's no one good but one. That's God. To release God to them. And then I, I calculated <laughs> that the measure of our greatness is the measure of how much the Spirit of God pours through us. It's not even what we do that makes us great. It's who comes through. You know, it's the measure of how much of Christ pours through us. And so it's almost like to be greater is to be less of you and more of Him. You know, if it's all of Him and zero of you, then you're pretty, you're pretty great in the kingdom. But if it's like mostly all your strengths, God will seem distant. Because he's made perfect or strong in our weakness. And one of my weaknesses is talking, believe it or not. <laughs> I stumble over my words. One of my weaknesses is, is singing because I forget the lyrics. And uh, 
I don't have the greatest voice and I sing out of tune sometimes, but sometimes when I do sing, like I just, man, tears, like I, I just start cracking and God just breaks through my heart. Sometimes when I'm talking, I'll, it's like, it's really good and I know that it's not me, it's the Spirit of God speaking through me, so I can't touch the glory, I can't take the glory. I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't have it any other way. And some, sometimes people will say, like years ago, I don't know how I am now, but it's like, man, you're so different, Chris. I remember when you were younger. It's like now you're like this, you know, how, where'd you get all this wisdom? I was like, it's not me. If there's any wisdom that you see, it's definitely not me. It's just God showing you that he's real. And if he can change me, he can change you too. Stuff like that. It's not, nothing that I'm boasting in myself. I'm... Pfft, I know what I am by myself. I'm a, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Seriously, man. I can barely form sentences properly if I sit beside a stranger. I don't know how to stir up a conversation. Oh, I can't sing very good. I, my sen- I'm not very smart. I hang around smart people and they, I let them talk. Just let them do the talking. But when it comes to the glory and the presence of God, something just stirs up inside of me and I just, I get so excited, I can't stop talking about God. Because He just comes through us like a river of living water, and then it triggers them, and then they start talking, they get all excited, and then we're all stirred up as one body in the Lord. So if anyone boasts, let him boast in the Lord, not in our our strengths, because our strengths is, makes Him distant. Because He's made perfect, His grace is made perfect in our weakness. And so it's pretty cool. I got, man some of the simplest keys that I've ever received from the Lord, just yawning, just opening my mouth and yawning in the presence of God comes. And then God's waiting to see, am I going to be, am I going to fear the atmosphere? Am I going to fear people around me? Or am I going to maintain this anointing by keeping my mouth open? There is something to keep your mouth open, whether you're yawning or teaching. Because in John, or not John, Matthew 5, it says that Jesus opened his mouth and taught them. So many people are scared to open their mouth. Listen, if you don't open your mouth, how do you know what's going to come out? How do you know if there's a... Maybe there's a, there's a coin in that fish's mouth. If that fish didn't open its mouth, you know, that coin would have never came out. If Jesus would have never opened his mouth, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have had the Beatitudes in that one area. You know, if jo- Joseph, Mary... <laughs> Mary so- we have Mary's song because she opened her mouth. Don't be scared of the atmosphere. Don't be scared of those who try to shut you down because of the anointing in you. Open your mouth. Fling wide you heavenly gates. The King of Glory is going to come in. He's going to come into the atmosphere. He's going to come into the, to the earth realm. He comes through you because you're a temple of the Holy Spirit. And in Ezekiel's temple, it says that the water would get deeper and deeper. You know, it starts, it starts here. But as you open up and let the rivers of living water pour out through you, it gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And you start begin baptizing other people in the Holy Spirit, like Peter. When he spoke, he opened his mouth, and the Holy Spirit baptized them. And he began speaking with tongues and, you know, in the book of Acts. But if Peter didn't open his mouth, that wouldn't have happened. You don't know what's going to come out of your mouth. And obviously, you know, if you're an extrovert and you... <laughs> Probably, you probably babble a lot too many things and you just get in the way but it's or an introvert you both talk enough um, just it's basically you die to yourself and just do the best that you know how to release Christ in you and uh, some of the easy, the greatest keys that I received from listening to other people is they would just say you know whatever whatever manifests the presence of God in your life do that all day if you want to grow your spirit, whatever, wherever the anointing is, whatever your, because basically that's your your kingdom job, probably that you'll be doing for eternity. Some of it is it's just worshiping the Lord. Some of it is just reading the scriptures, or even praying the scriptures, or reading them out loud, or, or some of us is just getting together in groups with other believers and just you know getting jacked up in the glory. I used to fantasize about getting so jacked up in the glory. I'd be like at work and just laying on my chair on my lunch break, just daydreaming of 
God moving powerfully by His Spirit and people falling over and the Holy Spirit's moving over here and then people start, you know, just crumbling to the ground, laughing uncontrollably and people are getting healed of sicknesses and diseases. I would just think, and it, it's not us doing anything. We're just sitting all together in, the, in this group getting jacked up. Just living life on earth as it would be in heaven. You know, a family of bliss. A family in the bliss. With good fruit. Fruit that remains. Fruit of the Holy Spirit. You want stuff that remains. You know, focus on the eternal. I mean, like, really focus. To the point where you shut off Facebook and you you turn off everything and just, like, focus. I was reading something about uh, when you pray, go into your innermost chamber to be alone with the Father. When you pray, go into your innermost... I thought that was a prayer closet. Like, you have to go inside a closet, literally close the door. You know, when you're a baby Christian, you don't know these things. (laughs) Jesus speaks in parables and mysteries. When you pray, go into your innermost chamber. You could be surrounded by people talking and yakking and just... You can be surrounded by children crying and, you know, and just go into your inner chamber and be alone with the Father. You don't, you can close your eyes or have your eyes wide open. It's just walking with God. I literally used to go on the streets and I remember one time there was, I was worshiping God with my guitar, singing songs. Uh, I didn't care who was around me. It was like uh, on Maine and Hastings in Vancouver where there was all these drug addicts with needles and stuff like that and... A fist fight broke out behind me, and I'm like, Hallelujah, yeah! And I'm singing it, and <laughs> there's a scrap, you know? And uh, it's just, it was, I asked God, send me the darkest places, Lord. I thought He was going to send me to, like, you know, I don't know, who knows where the darkest places are. And He sent me there. I would go there, like, every Saturday, and just worship God, open the heavens, just. So I confront demons. I got threatened to be nailed to a totem pole by a demon and a man one time. I was like, it's too late, dude. I'm already crucified with Christ. <laughs> you can't nail me there. I'm already crucified. <laughs> and this is my risen spirit talking to you. <laughs> yeah, man. And we, would, we would just walk up and down. I have these visions of people throwing their needles like, I don't need this anymore. You have what I need. And, you know, just, okay, here, take it. Glory realms. Hallelujah. Let's talk about some of that. Your dreams, when you daydream with God, it's just like a platform. It's like a template for what God will do through you. I used to daydream or fantasize about God moving powerfully, touching people, touching demon-possessed people. I'd run into him all the time. I'd run into this one guy. Man, I so many times I'd run into demon-possessed people. I get so mad. And I don't know what to do. First time there was this little uh, kid doing this mind stuff and on the window. No, no, no. Yeah, anyways. He, he had... I could feel the demon two blocks away and he gets on the bus and the thing laughed at me because I didn't know how to cast it out. I'm like, God, that is not right. I have to know how to cast these things out. I tried praying underneath... Praying underneath my on my breath, like not to disturb anything, and I couldn't cast it out. And then it happened again. I went to a hospital. I was going to get an X-ray for my wrist, and I sit down, and I start feeling like I'm losing my mind. Like all of a sudden, like my mind is like, oh my gosh, what is going on? I can barely hold my thoughts together. It feels like my brain just exploded, and I feel like mentally insane. And I feel this demon spirit there. I look over, and there's a person there. And I realize they had a, like, it was, uh, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, They they had this retard, I guess, is the best way to describe it. But I had no idea that this was a demon until afterwards. I didn't know I could have cast it out. Because I felt the thing, uh, ah, like, I don't know how, whatever they do, it was a demon spirit. And I was just a brand new believer. I didn't know how to deal with these things. And then then I started getting really aggressive about it and angry that I cannot cast these devils out. Like, God, people in the Bible cast out devils. 
you know, you got to equip me to do this. And then I saw this other guy. He's screaming at the same thing. Feel the demon. He's screaming at these girls, love your mother. And I feel the demon. I'm getting so angry because it's the spirit of rage. And I'm like, God, what do you want to do about this? You know, I give up. I don't know what to do. I try praying in tongues underneath my breath. I keep running into all these demons and you keep giving me all these other challenges. What do you want to do about this? And then I, I'm angry. I didn't expect God to talk back to me. He said, tell him I love him. The, the presence of God came for one second. Tell him I love him. And the presence of God lifted. Ooh. <laughs> okay, I got instructions out. I didn't know. But I thought, okay. And then I, I looked at the guy again and fear hit me. I'm like, if I tell this guy that Jesus says that he loves you, he's going to punch me in the face. He might even have a knife and he'll throat me, you know, gut me. And I started getting scared and then I, I, I kind of withheld. I'm like, I can't do this, man. This is too much. This is not worth it. Just let them manifest. I'm going to stay over here. I'm going to hide in my chair and just pretend nothing happens. And then I realized, oh, wait, God spoke to me. If that was God, you know, the presence of God was there. If God spoke to me, then I better obey God. I don't want to be in rebellion. It's a sin of witchcraft. You know, so I'm like, oh, man, I better obey God. And I saw him getting up to leave. And it wasn't my stop, so I, I get up and I, I chase him off the sky, well, off the sky train. I get up and I walk in, and I'm walking. And I see him over uh, on my shoulder, about ten feet, and I'm getting closer and closer. He looks over at me, and then uh, I just put my hand on his shoulder and I said, "Sir, Jesus says that He loves you." And he turned around again, and tears just jet streamed down his cheeks. And he said, "When you said that, it was like an angel spoke." I said, "Yeah." That's Jesus proving and saying that he loves you. It's <laughs> something like that. It's just proof that Jesus really loves you. That's the love of God. And he said, you need to have, you need to, you know, have them in your heart and save you and stuff like that. And I led him to Jesus. It was that easy. Just obeying the word of the Lord out of irritation because it never worked before. And then God was just giving me all these different chances. And uh, and then I bought him something to eat. I shared the gospel with him the best I could and. And then uh, I left it at that. And uh, so you'll you'll get all these encounters. It's just the little tiny decisions that you make in life to choose faith and not unbelief. Choose faith and not fear. You know, just choose to like just seek God with everything instead of just like being fulfilled with all these soulish things. And your life changes. You start seeing the power of God. You start seeing the manifestation of of God is real and you make God real to others. Oh man, I remember all these others, all these other stories are coming to my mind. Like God will protect you when He He sent me out there. Like demon possessed people will come running at me to hurt me, and then boom, it's from zero anointing to like boom, like a like a fifty or a sixty percent, just a manifestation of the presence of God, and their, their eyes would widen and they run away, saying, "You have the power, man!" I'm like, and I I told him to come back. You need to get born again because Jesus revealed himself to you and stuff like that. You have to get these encounters over and over again. And you start seeing the pattern of God working through your life. And it's not you at all because I had zero anointing. He was just protecting me. He told me to go there. And uh, it's just stepping out in the things that you've been dreaming with God about and then you just step out and start doing them. And then the, the, the haters will come. The liars will come. The, the religious Pharisees, Sadducees trying to accuse you, condemn you, trying to shut you down, trying to make you go home. And because you're taking their territory. Satan is a religious spirit. You know, he quotes the scriptures. He memorized the Bible. You know, yeah, Satan, his most predominant manifestation is a religious spirit. God is not religious at all. He is all about just freedom, family, joy, peace, you know. He wants to heal your spirit. He wants to heal your soul, I should say, so that you can be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be healed so you can project God into the world through your thoughts, through your actions, and through your atmosphere. You know, all things are yours, but where are all things? How come they're not manifesting? Because they're in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus is the Spirit. Are you in, you know, Jesus Christ? Christ is Spirit. When we're in Christ, we're in His promises, in His covenant. Oh, I'm just remembering some stuff that I read now. 
Yeah, Joseph's coat of many colors. That's like prophetic of the seven spirits of God. That's all we need is God's spirit pouring through us. We need his wisdom, his understanding, his counsel, his might, the spirit of revelation, spirit of understanding, spirit of the fear of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, the prince of peace. You know, the, all the seven spirits of God just, you know how to like attack each and every situation daily. That is, Joseph's coat of many colors represented that. It's like he was complete because he had the seven spirits of God. You know, Joseph is another word for Jesus, Savior. You know, it's the same thing with Noah's covenant rainbow. He, God said that the rainbow would be in the clouds. Where's the clouds? The glory clouds. <laughs> the cloud of witnesses. It's in the glory. It's in the, it's in the new Jerusalem. All the covenant promises of God are yes and amen. But they're in that anointing. They're in the realm of glory. And you just release them through that realm where you are seated. Just got to get your mind renewed. <laughs> so that you don't think like, like dust. I saw something kind of interesting today. God was talking to Abraham when he, when he split the animals in half and stuff like that. He's like, take three heifers, three young lambs or whatever, three whatever. Like, it's like, Abraham said to God, how shall I know? How shall I know this? I can't remember what he was saying, but I just glanced over it. How shall I know this, Lord? And then God's like, take three of this, three of that, and three of that. And a young pigeon and a turtle dove or something like that. It's like, I saw 333. How shall I know? 333, the mind of Christ, the all-knowing mind of Christ. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. You know, call upon me and I will show you things that you do not know. It's the all-knowing mind of Christ. 666 is the natural mind. It doesn't know the things of the Spirit. But the 333 is the mind of Christ. You know, Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Call upon me and I will show you things. I will manifest to you. I will show you things in the spirits. You know, that you do not know. It's the all-knowing mind of Christ. Just, and it, it reveals things that, you know, he makes all things known to us in the Holy Spirit. I'm thinking of Corinthians somewhere. You know, the Spirit searches the deep things of God and reveals them to us. How is it revealed? The Spirit of Revelation. It's like the mind of Christ. God just shares his mind with you. You know, his thoughts. His ways, <laughs> his dreams. You can daydream with God. And then when you see them come to pass, it's not exactly as the way you've seen it, but it's similar. I mean, when I fell into a trance and saw a vision of myself preaching in Taiwan two weeks before it happened, I knew what I was supposed to preach. I know what I was supposed to release. And God, every, every single step of the way there, he was revealing different things to me. Like uh, this hungry dog. I saw this bony dog. It was malnutrition. And like basically that's the way. Like he was just a castaway of this, this street dog. You know. And I just saw like that's, that's the way like the church treats like a lot of people walking on the street. It's all about their ministry. It's all about them. It's all about th with their works. But no. How about we just feed the dog? <laughs> Remember that woman, you know, but even the dogs eat the crumbs for their master's table. Even just releasing a loaf of bread, the bread of his presence upon everyone. It's like it's not about kicking the dog and making it go away. It's how about you feed him? And I tried to give this dog my breakfast. My heart broke for a dog because I'm allergic to dogs. They make me sneeze. And I said to the person who was with me, I said, I am taking this dog back to Canada to feed it, to love it, because it's rejected and starving out here. It's crying. <laughs> I feel like crying now. Something broke in my heart for this dog that I don't even know. And then I just like I tried to go come carefully and give him my breakfast, and he, he was scared of me. And then I just made it my life's mission just to like bring the bread of God's presence to everyone who has been abused by the false father, the father of lies. The only thing, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. The truth is a person and he comes with the presence. 
So if you're bringing truth that will set someone free, you'll be anointed. It's not just going to be dead words and accusations. So I've always made it my life's mission to bring the bread of His presence and just prepare the ground before I even go anywhere. Just, just pour out my heart before God to plow the ground. Those who sow in, you know, sow in tears will doubtless rejoice, come back with their harvest or whatever Psalm says. And I would see the fruit of it. I would spend my, I'd spend like, I don't know how many hours bawling for souls. And then when I just show up, the anointing is freely just released. And people would get saved when I would go to these street meetings and stuff like that. People would get saved. And it wasn't anything that I did. It was just God's will pouring through me, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying the will of God. God's not willing to any perish, you know. And he would, God would break my heart for an, a beast, natured, animal. And I see, I interpret that as the 666 mindset. The beast nature. Paul fought beast at Ephesus. But him who has wisdom, calculate the number of the beast. It's 666. It's the number of a man. It's the man with the beast mindset. The 333 is the mind of Christ, which you've been born into when you feast upon Jesus Christ. He was placed in a feeding trough, you know. <laughs> Come on, so if you eat upon him, you receive his angelic nature. What is the will of God that you believe in Jesus Christ? And you eat his flesh, drink his blood. That's communion, not cannibalism. <laughs> you, you drink his blood. That's the life of God that was poured out for you to wash away your sins, heal you of your... He was wounded for our transgressions and all that stuff. You know, Isaiah 53, you can read it for yourself. When you feast upon him, it's that communion. You're just partaking of his nutrients and getting strengthened with might in the inner man so you can stand your holy ground in the evil day. Where are you standing? The only safe place in this world is in Christ Jesus Christ. You know, Christ Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's the only safe place in the whole universe is in Christ. And we know that Christ is in spirit. Is spirit. That's why you need to be sealed with the Holy Spirit on your forehead in Revelation. Touch not the earth till the servants of our God are sealed in their forehead. It's that Holy Spirit seal of promise that all your thoughts are just set upon Him. Your affections are settled upon Him. All you can see is Him. <laughs> when you watch a movie, you're looking for Him. You're watching, looking for Revelation. When you're playing a video game or whatever you do, playing golf, it's like you're w walking with God in the cool of the day. You're in your innermost chamber, even though you're surrounded by everything else. You're with Him. And His presence is tangible in your life. Yeah. The other thing I was enjoying today is I was just reading the scriptures. and Stuff will pop in my mind and I can just pray it through. It was, I remember some people who actually... He sowed into, sowed into me, and then I, I just began praying for them. And then I started remembering my children. I began praying, and then I go back to the Bible. It's like, I just, there's always something to do when you focus upon God. You'll never be bored again. Boredom comes from not getting, you know, filling your soul with, you know, worthless things. When you feed your soul, you know, to magnify the Lord, how could you be bored? God's a life-giving spirit. <laughs> Focus on the life giver and get some life in you. <laughs> oh man, shocking. what did I do with my water juice? My water juice. <clears throat> the funny thing is, everything that I'm doing here, making these videos, talking about my relationship to God, you can do the same thing. I really feel strong that so many people are scared to open their mouth and just release the goodies that's inside of them. Ugh. God's not giving you a spirit of fear, but of peace, love, and a sound mind. Peace, love, and a sound mind of Christ. Sometimes you just need to open your mouth just to see what's going to come out. <laughs> You know, you don't have to make videos like me. Maybe you can just post something on Facebook about God. Maybe you're maybe you're ashamed of your family members are going to accuse you. Well, hey, Jesus wasn't ashamed when he was ripped naked and hanging for you on a cross so you could be free. 
man, that was like one of the first things that ever hit me as a brand new believer. I'd be ashamed to put, you know, I had this those chick tracks. I'm trying to witness, and I'm so scared that someone's going to see me put the, the tracks underneath a, a car windshield. It was just dead works, but I didn't. I found out later on. And then I went to a pawn shop, and I was looking at a guitar, and someone said to me, what kind of music do you play, man? And I was ashamed to say Christian music. Because I thought they were going to make fun of me. And then I just repented right after that. It's like, man, why am I ashamed? What is this? Where did this come from? Man, I'm ashamed of being, you know, in the world and full of sin. That's shame. It's so backwards, man. I've been set free in the glory, man. When I sing, the glory realms open up and, you know, angels show up in Jesus. And, you know, the, everything that's normal in the kingdom of heaven is... It's normal on earth. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, one time I went to this Kevin Prosh meeting. Man, and he said, all the angels are coming. You know, we don't worship angels. Get a life. <laughs> I told God, I said, man, God, I'd like to see some more angels. You know, I haven't seen some in a while. I'm not going to worship them. You know my heart. You know, we'll probably worship you together, you know. <laughs> and we have done that before. I'll come back to the Kevin Prosh thing in a second. I was at work just doing my sanding this this wood, and this huge angel appears with a piece. I could feel a nice light presence, you know, coming off the angel, and he's, he's going right through the roof in another dimension of my workplace. And I'm like, why is he here? It looks like a warring angel. It's pretty scary. <laughs> and, but there's a piece coming. But I wanted to make sure, you know, because Satan appears like an angel of light. You know, all these you know, things that are written in the scripture. So I'm like, test the spirit. You, you know, if Jesus did Jesus Christ come in the flesh? Or are you some kind of antichrist? <laughs> but I said to the angel, like, they're not going to worship God. So I said, uh, hey, glad you're here. Let's worship Jesus. And I, start, I said, sing with me. And we started singing. Well, I started singing. Hallelujah. You know that Benny Hinn song? Hallelujah or whatever? I don't know. I've only ever seen it on Benny Hinn. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. They were singing this song, hallelujah. I totally forgot about the angel that was there. And I don't know why the angel appeared. He didn't talk to me. I, I just said to him, we're going to worship Jesus. And the presence of God, that was a nice piece. Like it, it quadrupled. It took like five times stronger. We went into this realm of just worshiping the Lord. And I didn't care why the angel was there anymore. I was just caring about the presence of God is here. And uh, <clears throat> maybe he was just putting, maybe God just opened my eyes to see that, hey, I'm with you, man. You're protected. Don't worry about anything. Just enjoy your life walking on the earth with me, kind of thing. You know, that's the kind of vibe I got off of it. It's like, man, there's more with me than those, you know, against me. I'm always surrounded by, you know, the angelic hosts. I got God backing me up. Hallelujah. Anyways, I ran out of time for this video. Uh, I might do another one. I want to talk some more about those glory stories when I walk in, encounter demon-possessed people, and the angels show up, and the Lord Jesus Christ would manifest, and just destroy the works of darkness, because that's perfectly normal. And the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And uh, it'll encourage your bliss, I hope. <laughs> well, God bless your face with an abundance of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Worship time. <sighs> time to set our affections on things above, lift them off of the earth and put them right into reality, have a throne room perspective, and from there let the seven spirits of God blaze through your spirit, soul, and out your body and into the earth as the light of the world. Let the perfection of God just flood through you as you put all your focus and all your delight in the Lord and He gives you the desires of His heart which is the desires of your heart because you have one heart with the Lord. You are one with your Maker. When you have throne room perspective Nothing in this world can tie us down because we live from above. We've been born from above. And we just release those living waters onto the earth. 
show the world what God is like. Show the world the light of the world. God blazing through our hearts, blazing through our souls, and tangibly feeling it in the body. <laughs> Holy Spirit, have your way 100%. Yahweh. Let our ways be your ways, God. Are your ways our ways? Not our ways, but your ways. Anything that's not in perfect alignment, let it be burnt up now in Jesus' name. No weapon formed against us is going to prosper because it can't reach us up here. <laughs> formed against us. We'll just sit up here in the heavens and laugh with you, Lord Jesus Christ. Drink him in. Like a hungry, hungry hippo. Chomping that pearl of great price. <laughs> and manifesting Christ. Hallelujah. The best sound doctrine you'll ever hear is a laugh from the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. this professional ministry. <laughs> oh, the glory. Let it come, Lord. More. Pleasance of the Lord flood through this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, we all know that true worship is full surrender to God. That's why sometimes you feel like there's a hard breakthrough. You have to break through people's souls because they don't want to surrender everything to God until they have an experience with God and they realize, oh, God is way better than this darkness that surrounds me. <laughs> so if I just let the light, the light of Christ shine through my heart, I'll have a light for my path. I'll have a, <laughs> I'll have a better walk. Walking in the light as He is in the light, the light of glory, the light of His presence. And then the more I grow in this, the light of God. He's the Father of lights. It's written. The more I walk in the light, the more I become the light of the world as I yield to that light out of this world and shine it into this world. Hallelujah. Oh, Shika. I love worship. I love full surrender. If you cannot say 
Father, I surrender all right now. And you see something there? You know what? That something is just a phantom. It's an illusion that looks like it's something better than God. There is nothing in this world that is better than God. There's nothing in the world to come that's better than God. There's nothing in heaven that is more pleasurable than just beholding God. Or else we'd be staring at, you know, the grass that's singing to God, you know. Everything reflects God in heaven. And it will be on earth as it is in heaven. Everything here is going to reflect and to point to God. And uh, it's going to come through you. The same way that, remember in the book of Acts, the angel says to the people looking at Jesus that departed into the heavens and a cloud covered him. The angel said, the same way that you saw him leave, he's going to come back that way. That means he's coming back in the cloud of witnesses. He's coming back with clouds and glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's coming back through a bride without spot or wrinkle. He's coming back for for a pure or through a pure and a spotless bride made without blemish who doesn't fear death, doesn't fear anything because perfect love has consumed every cell in her body which is the body of Christ. Perfect love has cast out all insecurities. Perfect love has cast out all doubt and unbelief. Perfect love has cast out all the fretting for the future because perfect love is our future. Perfect love is our stable anchor. <laughs> Without perfect love, there's nothing but fear and torment left. But thanks be to God that perfect love is brooding through His bride. It's the perfect love of Him and her love just colliding together as one but then his love just overwhelms the entire world as we show what God is like <laughs> they all know that we are connected to him by our love <laughs> which is his love because we have become one spirit with the Lord and where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom and God is the spirit and God is love perfect love full surrender is just yielding to that perfect love you know one of the greatest gifts that you could ever receive is God's heart the most cherished gift that you could ever receive is God's love God's heart you want a new heart the Bible says that he will give us a new heart holy <laughs> Hallelujah. He's given us His heart. All we have to do is open up ours, and He just places it inside of us. And that's our life. Out of the heart flows the issues of His life. It's out of His heart through your heart, through your soul and your spirit, and in even your body.